After so many whispers and rumors about another Borderlands sequel, 2K Games has surprised us with what they call a pre-sequel. Borderlands the pre-sequel's events happen between Borderlands and Borderlands 2, and allow us to watch Handsome Jacks rise to power. We get a new set of Vault Hunters to select from, but for this review I'll be using the Lawbringer. I'll do some small reviews on other characters on this channel at a later date. You start out on Pandora, but are soon launched to its moon, Elpis. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, no. E-L-P-I-S. Elpis. <laughs> Will you quit that? One Colonel Derpaderp. Okay, that's not really her name. It's Surfenter. I don't know. Is destroying Elpis with a giant laser. On the moon, you need to find and wear an Oz kit, which provides a limited oxygen supply that can be refilled by walking over oxygen fissures, activating oxygen generators, or walking into buildings or other places that have oxygen supplies. It's a cool strategic element, but don't worry. There are oxygen points all over the place, and I had only a few run for the oxygen before you die moments. Running will deplete your oxygen faster, so be careful. Strangely, being in a vehicle does not make you lose oxygen. Both vehicle types are open air. Another new element is you can jump up high in the air and press a button to slam down on your enemies. And some Oz kits provide an elemental slam too, like acid, fire, or ice. Ice is a newly added element that has been added to weapons, shields, and the aforementioned Oz kit. With an ice weapon, you could freeze an enemy to a point where you just have to run up to them and smash them to bits. Pretty cool, eh? Laser weapons replace the iridium weapons found in Borderlands 1 and 2, and come in burst and stream versions. The stream lasers are a lot like using a Ghostbusters proton pack. Don't cross the streams! Okay, go ahead. It probably won't do anything. But remember, if someone asks you if you're a god, you say yes! I've been playing like I normally do by myself, but I must say this game looks like it would be a laugh to play online with everyone jumping to insane heights and slamming everybody and everything and running for oxygen and driving moon zoomy buggies and flying vehicles. The question most people will have about BPS is what's been improved compared to the other two? And is BPS the best game so far? Well, as for it being better than the other Borderlands games, I don't think I can say I like one over the other. They all have their charms. But there are improvements. A new feature I really like is everything on the ground is picked up automatically instead of just money and health. Well, not exactly everything. Moonstones, guns, shields, and Oz kits have to be manually selected. So you're getting ammo, oxygen, money, and health. I guess I should have said that to begin with. You asked for it. And speaking of moonstones, crazy what you want? Earl is back and living in a hub city called Concordia. And guess what he takes as payment? You got it, moonstones which seem to be easier to get than in Borderlands 2. As in B2, Earl will sell you backpack, bank, ammo, and grenade expansions. Another great addition is the grinder. You need to help Sparks with a task before you get the grinder, by the way. Ready for service. You falling asleep on me, soldier? The grinder is a machine that will take three items of about the same stats and give you one better item, maybe. You can always be sure of something good by adding moonstones, so this tempts you to spend your moonstones on better weapons instead of using Earl's services. This is a cool way to clear out your inventory instead of selling your items to vending machines. In case you were wondering, Dr. Zed doesn't appear on the moon. I guess he never leaves Pandora. Borderlands the pre-sequel has more voice interaction between your characters and the NPCs in the game, giving it a more fluid and realistic story experience. That looks incredibly dangerous. The original Borderlands was really sparse in this regard. B2 improved a lot on it, but the player characters still didn't say much. 
Now your character chats away with Jack, Moxie, Sparks, pretty much anyone on his, her, or its comlink. The dialogue is funny and it will make you smile and often laugh out loud. And I've got a nasty surprise for you when I activate my turrets. Not a surprise then, but something for you to think about. Oops, sorry. My best men will gladly meet you there, Vault Hunter, to bore you in the juices of their skill. You're creepy, mister. I thought the last ones we killed were your best men. No, we've got more. As with the previous Borderlands, Borderlands the pre-sequel is rated M for mature. It's violent and contains strong language. Just don't tell Hillary Clinton that you're playing it, or she might try to ban it. I'm serious, she actually led a campaign to ban violent video games. So Borderlands the pre-sequel retails at almost $60 at the time of the making of this video. Honestly, I'm a little disappointed. Aren't you the naysayer? Seems like a lot of money to plunk down on a game, right? Maybe not. Consider this. You pay about $15 to $20 to see a movie for about an hour and a half to two hours entertainment. You could easily put 30 hours into the first playthrough of this game. That would be over $450 in entertainment at the movies. If that doesn't convince you to part with that much swag, just wait a few months and you could probably get the game a lot cheaper. So for my final verdict, if you liked slash loved one or more of the other Borderlands games, you're sure to like slash love this one. So when they did commercials on TV for Borderlands 2 Game of the Year, they used the uh, Everybody Wang Chung Tonight 80s song. Wonder what they'll do when Borderlands the pre-sequel Game of the Year comes out. Please, not Between the Moon and New York City by Christopher Cross. Please, anything but that. How about Duran Duran's New Moon on Monday? I light my Oz and wave it for the new moon on Elpis. I live five lives through the fight. I spent my moonstones on that new me satellite. Moon on Elpis, I skipped my meals every night.